Hey, what's going on guys? This is Stevie Hall. I traveled here to Total Boat headquarters and I am here today. We're gonna to be doing a lot of projects, but the first thing we're gonna be doing is encasing some AstroTurf and some playing cards. Uh, and we're gonna be using tabletop epoxy. Now tabletop epoxy is one of my favorites to use. When I'm looking to do things, cause I am a one man operation, I can't have projects just sitting around for days. So when I use tabletop, it enables me to put down a, a single layer and move on to the next step of my project very soon. So to get started here, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna be using, using a mold release spray and placing that in here and then we'll get the mixing. This is uh, the tabletop epoxy. The good thing is that it's one to one mix ratio, so you really can't mess it up. So I'm gonna be mixing up just five ounces of part A and five ounces of part B. So when you start mixing, you've started the clock here of this activation. So it gets really cloudy, which means that now you're activating the resin and the hardener. I like to work in little tornadoes. So I'll go really wide on the top and get that whole surface and work down to nice and narrow and tight at the bottom. And then I'll widen out at the bottom, making sure I'm scraping along that entire cup base and then work back up to the top and get nice and neat. You wanna continue mixing and it's back to the clear consistency of when you poured it. That's when I start adding my color. I'm gonna be adding a green color to give it a nice green texture at the bottom. Just take a nice little scoop here of that and I'll make sure to get all that stuff in there. I'll follow the same mixing patterns to make sure I get that color completely mixed into the combination here. Now I'll bring in my mold and we'll pour it in. All right, now that I have it in there, you'll see a few bubbles sitting here on the surface. So before I place anything on top of it, I'm gonna hit it with a heat gun here and get rid of those bubbles. I'm gonna be placing this on top and then we'll start mixing uh, for our first layer to go on top of the turf. And then I like to brush these grass petals back so that the cards can layer in between those. I kind of like passing like I'm actually mowing the grass. That way I can make sure it's an even spread and I make sure I touch all the, all the area that I need to. I'll go back and paint against the grain, against the grass, and that way I can stand that grass up and make sure it's working all the way down to the base. Uh, these are some of the player cards that we're gonna be encasing. I mean, these are player packs from the 1990s. Some old school players that some of you guys might not recognize as the people on hand have made me aware of. <clears throat> this helps protect the card longevity wise and it helps it seal and secure itself to the grass that we already have in there. This is an Al Harris card for those of you that were wondering. Any Eagles fans out there? <laughs> and when I place it in the grass, I'm just trying to work it against the grass here so I can give it a cool little look. And now I'm just gonna place these in here, but I'm gonna do it with these packs as well. I'm just gonna get the backs of these because these are a little bit more delicate. Uh, I'm going to be doing a clear coat over top of what's already there. And then once that starts setting up, we'll come and place cards on top of that. We have some cards that have been sealed already. And we're just going to place these in and pour another layer of clear coat on top of that and let it sit. You can see the grass, you see the cards. When you do a layer on top of that and encasing it, uh, gives it a lot more depth. And uh, when you do multiple layers like that, it gives your piece a lot of dimension. Sneak one more in there. Why not? Follow me, Blazer. All right, so we're back here. We let this thing sit overnight. It is fully cured and we are ready to move on to the next step. And there it is. This problem here is a recessed bubble. And as I was trying to clean something out of there late at night, uh, it scaled up and, and lifted out of there and we have a problem. So me, I love seeing errors that are made and how you can fix them. Uh, it encourages me as a maker to always uh, be optimistic and to find a way around the errors that you make because nobody's perfect. 
So this is just a Dremel. We're just gonna use it to dig that out. And then when we hit it with the epoxy, it'll fill it and be uniform to the rest and look like nothing ever happened. So now guys, I have this thing grooved out here. Uh, when you put the epoxy in, you'll have virtually no bubbles other than your initial pore bubbles because it's bonding to other epoxy. So I know it looks bad now, but those blemishes will look brand new and you guys are seeing the finished product uh, that you won't even be able to see this crater that we just created. So now that we have that, we'll take it over to the table saw and we'll do the rip cuts to make this nice and square and uh, we'll go from there. We're square now. So the next step is just to take it over to our drum sander, get the surface nice and flat and ready to prepare for the next step. I just have a quarter inch round over bit in my router here. Uh, so we're gonna go around, touch all four sides of the top and then get it back inside for another pour. First thing here we have, uh, we have a couple little voids in there that uh, need to be filled. And to do that, uh, I've never used this before. This is my first time. So this is the Total Boat UV Cure. And we're just gonna put a little bead in there and then use this black light here to cure it and it will cure uh, in about a minute or two and then we'll be ready to go. Just like that, it's already ready and cured. When we do a tabletop flood coat, which we have our mixed resin here, I will pour it into the center of the area here. And when I get it there, I'll use a notch trowel here and you can use any type of spreader or any flat stick or your hands even. Um, and you work it right up to the edge and you let it just flow over the edges. And once it gets over there, it will curl underneath the bottom and drip. So that's why we have the cups underneath to make sure that you have a lifted surface so that it can get all the way around the edges and make sure that you get a full coverage of that side. And then now you see these little gaps here. Now you can use your trowel and work this down the line like that, or you can just use your hands and fingers. All right guys, so this project is done. This one means a lot to me. It has a lot of really valuable and really uh, big name football players in here and, and player cards. And also this project was really special. It again shows kind of the versatility in the turnover by using tabletop. Uh, we did this project all in 24 to 36 hours really. If you get down to even eye level with it, you can get down below and see perfectly in there and even see the backside of some of the cards that are sitting higher uh, that are encased in there. And it also shows a lot of the versatility in using tabletop. As, as easy as it is to use, it is easy to mess up. Uh, we had a big blemish in here and a big problem when we, when we came back here and used tabletop to fix those problems. So even if you have a mistake, don't give up on it because tabletop gives you great versatility to correct those issues and still come out with a very pristine and finished product. So that was using tabletop epoxy uh, from start to finish in under 36 hours. Thank you to Total Boat for bringing me out here. I got to do some really cool projects. This one included, shows a lot of versatility with the tabletop epoxy and what you can do in a very short amount of time. So uh, I can't wait to continue using this epoxy and the others that they offer to do more projects like this. And I encourage you guys to do the same.